Hi, Crystal Balls. Welcome to Pride Month. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. And I want to take a moment to thank everybody who has been so kind and supportive as I have battled through some health issues and um, some personal things. So I deeply appreciate all of your messages and kind words thank you from the bottom of my heart um i just want to tell everybody on patreon a quick hello and thank you so much for supporting me as well so we are going to do a video today about how not to be an ally before we get started i want to remind you guys of skillshare so skillshare is a online platform where you can learn pretty much anything and it is a great source to find anything from video editing to cooking to dog walking I mean there's pretty much anything that you can think of and there are great sources that are in bite size um, kind of segments that sh you know are easy to digest you can go over and over them again just because you watch them once doesn't mean that they disappear and you really can learn a lot and there's some experts here that are a part of Skillshare. So if that sounds interesting to you, please go down to the link in my description box and use my code to get 30% off. You can try the free trial and that's absolutely fine because you know what I did too and I am hooked but you know what there's no obligation if you get there you try the trial and you don't like it that's okay that's totally okay you don't have to you know commit to something that you don't like and that's absolutely fine but you can try it out so I encourage you to try it out use my link down below and um, thank you guys for checking out Skillshare. So as I said today, we are going to be talking about how not to be an ally. So um, just a quick insert here. I will be doing um, pride-based videos, meaning LGBTQIA plus videos in the month of June. My regular content will start back over in July um, some Patreons will actually get access to those videos first. So if there's something that you've been asking for, it most likely will be over on Patreon first before it uploads to face or upload to YouTube um, in July. So all of that out of the way. Thank you again for everybody for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and we are going to talk about how not to be an ally. And this is just a list that I composed that um, I have seen, heard, and witnessed and had a lot of other people talk about that is really difficult and allies trying to say they're an ally when they do these things. Now, this isn't to be harmful. It's kind of to kind of check ourselves and to check each other and just because you have fallen into some of these traps does not make you a bad person i don't want you to beat yourself up i just want you to do better and you know what i can do better too so that is the goal of this video and if we can have some good discussion in the comments remember this is a safe space and i um I welcome, you know, things that are challenging, but let's keep it civil in the comments. Okay. All right. So number 10, not how to be a, not an ally. So LGBTQIA plus stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, and asexual. So there are many people out there who believe that the A in the alphabet is for ally. It is not. It is for people who are asexual. And if you don't know what that is, please look that up. There's plenty of information out there about what asexuality is. 
And I just want to remind everybody that it is highly important to not erase our asexual guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Thanks, OT. They are part of us. Ally is not part of this alphabet. And I don't want you all to be offended by that. How many other marginalized groups have to say ally in their title? No one. And we're not going to erase an entire group of people who is represented in our rainbow family because somebody's getting uncomfortable and believe that ally is part of it. It's not. You don't need to be part of the rainbow family and have to be acknowledged in the titles. The plus stands for other things, but again, not an ally. Let's not erase our asexual family. Okay. All right. So number nine, pronouns are elementary. I just want to remind everybody that pronouns were taught in elementary school or primary school, wherever you are in this world. This means that you were probably pretty little when you learned about pronouns. Why? Because it's something that is so common and so easy that a child can understand. There is nothing shocking or odd about addressing a person with their preferred pronouns. What is a pronoun? Describes a noun. So she, he, their, them, other things, lots of things. There's lots of pronouns out there and people forget A, that it's taught in school and B, that this is such a simple concept that little children get it. It's not that difficult. In today's world, we are trying very hard to make this normalized. For example, in my school, all of our emails and um, most of our correspondence have name and pronouns. So for example, Lisa T. Brink, she, her. Very easy. Doesn't take any more time. Not offensive. So easy that little kids understand it. Just keep that in mind. Number eight, no one owes you an explanation. So there are many different things that people want to know about the LGBTQIA plus family. And while it is up to the individual to disclose that to you, they don't owe you anything. They don't owe you your coming out. They don't owe you any explanation about what is between their knees, what their reproduction organs are, or anything else like that. They don't need to tell you why they dress the way that they do or why they're attracted to a person, why they're not attracted to a person. This is very important to remember because it is hugely violating to go up and start asking these questions. And I see it happen all the time, especially with our trans family. Trans family all of the time get different types of comments about, oh, and our non-binary people too, I'm so sorry, um, what they look like under their clothing. Imagine going up to a straight person and saying something like that. Um, imagine going up to a straight person and ask why they dress with a dress. Why do they put on shorts? Why do they have boobs? Why do they still have a penis? It's hugely violating. And I don't understand why people think that's okay. It's not. It is not. <sighs> Seven, just a reminder for those who, uh, I, I don't know how else to say this, police are not welcome at Pride. And I know that will hurt a lot of people's feelings, but I want to remind you that Pride started with a riot because of the police. The police were harassing 
LGBTQIA plus people and arresting them over and over again for being in a bar. There are a lot of people today who are still traumatized and triggered by the presence of police. And that just isn't our marginalized group. There are many, many groups out there who face very real and very scary pressure for having a police presence. And this is not a diss against anybody who is the police officer or the police people in general. It's just a reminder that your presence is triggering to a lot of people and it has and will cause damage. It has and will cause violence. And I'm not saying there's a call to anything. Or don't put words in my mouth. I know some people are going to see this and go cray cray. This is just a simple, strong suggestion as an ally. Just stay away if you are a police officer from your uniform or anything like that when you are attending Pride because it will trigger a lot of people. And police made people fight and fight back. So just keep that in mind. Um, number six, if you come to our spaces, do not expect us to accommodate you. And I know this is kind of a crass statement, but during Pride Month, you know, other times of the year too, but especially during Pride Month, we have a lot of people coming to gay bars. And while there's nothing wrong with that, there is when you come to be judgmental. It is a problem when you go into number five and say, we're not a sideshow. We're not for your entertainment. You as a straight person coming into our spaces can be very challenging and very scary. We come to gay bars for a reason because it's our space and it's a safe space for all of us. But I have firsthand witnessed how people who are straight turn this into a spectacle. Be homophobic. Get angry at people acting too gay or too out there or whatever the case may be. I've also seen harassment of drag queens and people really acting like they're afraid to catch gay. And, the, and this is horrible. I have seen people at drag shows who come for, I guess, a thrill or something. Like, it's not because they like drag shows. It's because they're trying to challenge something in them or whatever. But they kind of huddle in the corner and either try to be away from everybody and I guess they're worried that they're going to catch gay or they're harassing the performers. Do not come to a drag show or a gay bar if you cannot be okay in our spaces. We're not going to accommodate you. We're not expecting to go into a regular bar and have you guys really accommodate us. We have every right to be there. Absolutely. And you guys have every right to be in a gay bar as long as you're respectful. There is no reason in the world to, you know, try to do some really horrific things, make fun of people, um, call them out, do some, you know, ask them questions, acting like it's a spectacle. You don't have the right to do that. Would you feel okay in a regular bar and gay people coming up to you and asking you these kind of violating things or kind of looking at you and making spectacle out of you? No, you wouldn't. It is common sense and just a little bit of decency. Just don't come to our spaces and act like we need to accommodate you because that's not the case. You're coming to our spaces and please don't act like we're a spectacle or or do anything to harass our queens you know they're hardworking people they're doing their job just let them be if you can't do that if you can't chuck yourself at the door and you want to go in with 
some people just just excuse yourself you know please please don't bring that into the space because it's not needed so number four straight pride is not a thing and i'm telling everybody this because straight pride is not a thing there is nowhere in the world where you can be killed for being straight you have privilege as a straight person to turn on the television and see representation you have representation in every single branch of military that is that's the face of it you have uh, every state in the united states has representation in congress and it's the over abundance and over representation of part of the population being straight is the norm it is the default and there is no need for straight pride our pride month does not diminish your straightness it does not challenge it it doesn't make it any different we have one month out of the year you have 11 months actually you most likely have 12 months too you're fine you don't need to defend your straightness you've never had to we have to i have to defend being queer all the time it's not right and i wouldn't ask you to defend you being straight it's not right we exist we are but remember we are the minority you are the default number three the community does not owe you an education a lot of times allies look to the person that they are trying to help or empower and get education out of them. They expect the person who is genderqueer to tell them what it is. They expect a transgender person to explain what that means. They expect somebody who is bisexual or queer to tell them about what their, what their orientation is or what their um, preferences are they expect a pan person to explain the differences between attraction and gender and it, it's very odd to look at the place and the people that you are trying to help and trying to empower and expect them to educate you that doesn't make any sense take the time to google seriously there are plenty of YouTubers and plenty of representation out there that you can get a very good idea of what the people are like that you are trying to be an ally for. But that trans person doesn't owe you an education. This queer person does not owe you an education. Now, if we know each other and um, there are some people who are very comfortable and confident talking about themselves to represent a larger group of people, and that is fine. But you cannot assume that everybody is like that. There is a wealth of information and knowledge out there at your fingertips. Please use it. I will be doing another video about people in the Rainbow family who are very amazing and very good YouTubers. And I want to make sure that you can see them and you have their sources because they are pretty amazing. And a lot of these YouTubers are very good at educating people about the situation as a whole and talking about the group as a whole. And that is great. Please don't believe or think that anybody owes you an education. Those who put themselves out there are giving you an education. 
but that random queer kid that you ran into on the street doesn't owe you an explanation. Okay. Number two, do not out anybody. I can't believe I have to say this, but there are people in the ally community who believes that pushing somebody out will make them free. Pushing somebody out could cost them their life. It's just that simple. You don't have the right to decide when or if somebody should ever come out of the closet. I care about all my closeted brothers and sisters and non-binary pals out there. And I understand that you are there for a reason. And I support you and I love you no matter what place you're in. If you're so deep in the closet that you're afraid to move, know that I see you. If you're peeking and tiptoeing and trying to see what it looks like on the other side of that door, I'm with you. But if you need to stay in the closet for your own safety, your mental wealth and health, your mental health and well-being, I see you. It's okay. You don't owe anybody anything. You do what's safe and good for you. Allies or people who are saying they're allies, please, please don't push anybody to get out of the closet because you don't know what their situation is. And number one, I say this because it is a very detrimental statement that I have heard myself many times from people that claim to care for me. And I know I've heard it from many other people too. And one of the biggest and most damaging things that you can say and definitely not come across as an ally is hate the sin, not the center. If you use anything with a sentence like that, that has hate in it, it negates everything that is trying to be positive out of this statement. First, you're assuming that religion is a part of this person's life. You're assuming that it matters to them or religion is part of their life. And you're saying that there's hate involved. I'm telling you that hating the sin is saying that there's something wrong with you as a person because you're part of the LGBTQIA plus family. They believe that your life, that your, the way you were born is a sin. How damaging is that? How disgusting and vile is that? To say that to somebody. Hate the sin, but not the sinner. You're also implying that I'm a sinner. I'm implying that I subscribe to your religion. But even if I don't, that's still very damaging and hateful and hurtful. You are telling somebody that their life is so wrong and so bad that there deserves to be hate there. That they have done something so fundamentally wrong that they are a freak of nature. That they are against God or against God's plan or whatever weird case that you may put out here. This is a vile statement, and I have had it said to me more times than I want to tell you, and it never helps anybody. It makes you feel about that big. So if you truly are an ally, then don't start off your sentence with hate, because everything after that is bullshit. So whatever you're trying to get across, keep it to yourself. 
if you have to tell me or look at me or any of my loved ones and say, hate the sin, not the sinner, then you really need to look in the mirror. I'm sorry, Mary Sue. You know what? There's some issues with a lot of things in the Bible. It doesn't say that anywhere. And technically, some of you all are going to go to hell for eating meat on Fridays. So don't point at my lifestyle or my loved one's lifestyle or my community's lifestyle and say a horrible phrase like that and put us into a tiny grotesque box that you are standing on looking down with judgment. Please don't do that anymore. Being an ally is being educated about the community. Being an ally is understanding boundaries. Being an ally is empowering people, standing up with them, being a voice for people who may not be able to use theirs. It's coming from a place of privilege. And you can use your privilege for good. But if you do these 10 things, you really, really need to check yourself. Because you're not being an ally at that point. You're part of the problem. So really, really think about this. And like I said, there's exceptions to many of these. Um, especially with education. Like I said, some people are fine talking about and educating you about their orientation or their gender. But they don't owe it to you. Just keep in mind that we are human beings. June is just one month. Straight is the default. Police presence is scary. And our spaces are ours. All right, everybody. Food for thought there. I hope that this wasn't too damaging or triggering for some people. Um, I will remind, remember to put a trigger warning at the beginning. But um, I hope everybody has a great day or night wherever they are in this world. Remember that every single day is a gift. Use your time wisely. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.